Okay, we are going to summarize how to write the equation of a line. We have talked about all these different things. If you're given the slope and the y-intercept, if you're given a graph, if you're given the slope and a point, or if you are given two points. Okay, so let's just start with this very first one. And it's really all in the name. So if you are given the slope and the y-intercept, you have to decide, do I use slope-intercept form to start with, or do I use point-slope form to start with? So if I'm given the slope and the y-intercept, I'm going to start by using slope-intercept form. It's all in the name. If you're given the slope and the intercept, you start with slope-intercept form. Okay, and slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. The only two things that I have to know are the m, the slope, and the b, the y-intercept. And did they give that to me down below? Yes, they said the slope was one half, so I'm going to put one half where the m is. I'm going to recopy the x, the equals, and the y. And do I know b? Do I know the y-intercept? Yes, the y-intercept is negative 3. So I put a minus 3 where the b is. And that's it. I have the equation of my line in slope-intercept form. <coughs> it's all about the name. So if you're starting off with the slope and the y-intercept, you can jump straight into slope-intercept form. Okay, this next one, we want to write an equation if we're given a graph. So, if I'm ever given a graph of a diagonal line, like you see down here, I know that every diagonal line has an x and a y in the equation, so I'm going to start off with slope-intercept form again. which is y equals mx plus b. And like I said earlier, I only need to know two things, the slope and the b, the y-intercept. So if I ever see a picture of a diagonal line, I know that there's going to be an x and a y in the equation, so I'm going to just start right off with slope-intercept form. So first, let's find the slope. Now notice there's no points plotted on this graph, so I need to plot them. I need to see where the line goes through a corner of a box. And I can see it goes through a corner of a box right here. Is this right here a corner of this box? No. This kind of looks like it might be a corner. Is this a corner? Nope. This looks like it might be a corner. So I believe that that's a corner and that's a corner. So if I want to find slope, Remember, I count my rise over my run, and sometimes it's my fall over my run. And I like to count from left to right, so what do I rise? I rise 1, and how much do I run? I run to the right 2, so my slope is a positive 1 half. So up here, where my m is, I'm going to put a positive 1 half. I'm going to recopy the x, the equals, and the y. And B is the y-intercept, and where does this line touch the y-axis? And the line touches the y-axis right there, which is negative 3. And there is my equation in slope-intercept form if I'm given a graph. So if you're ever given the picture of a diagonal line and you want to write the equation, we can just jump, jump straight in to slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Now, just to review real quick, we don't always have diagonal lines. So what if I had a vertical line? Vertical lines, horizontal lines do not have a Y and an X in them. They only have one of those two letters. So this line here crosses only which axis? This line only crosses the x-axis, so it would be called x equals 
And what is your x everywhere on this line? Negative 2. That would be the equation of this orange vertical line. What's the slope of that, by the way? Undefined. Okay, now let me just draw a horizontal line. This horizontal line only crosses which axis? It only crosses the y-axis. So I call it y equals, and what's my y value everywhere on this line? Negative 1. So that is the equation of the horizontal line. So all vertical lines are x equals, because they only cross the x-axis. All horizontal lines are y equals, because they only cross the y-axis. And your diagonal lines, they need an x and a y, so we have to put them in slope-intercept form, where you have to find the slope, rise over run, and find the b, see where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so now we're getting into some of our newer material. On this problem, I'm given the slope, and I'm given a point. So if you are ever given a point, not from a picture of a graph, but if you're ever given a point, we are going to start off with point-slope form. So if I'm ever given a point, I'm going to start with point-slope form. Now, in order to be ready for this form, do I have a point and do I have a slope? And yes, I do. I have a point and I have a slope, so I'm ready to go. So, point-slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals m, parentheses, x minus x1. And I'm going to just start plugging in things that I know. So, it always starts off y minus. Now, this wants the y-coordinate, so which of these is the y-coordinate? Negative 1. And then I can clean this up. A minus a negative back-to-back -back makes a big plus. I'm going to bring down my equals. Now it wants the slope. So what does it say the slope is? 1 half. And then in parentheses, it's always x minus. And this right here wants the x-coordinate. So what is my x-coordinate? Four. This one stays a minus because I didn't subtract a negative. Okay, so this is point slope right here. But most of the time we convert it to slope intercept. So let's keep going. Next thing I'm going to do is distribute my one half. So how much is one half times x? One half x. Then I need to take one half times negative four. Now this is easy to just think about mentally. What's half of four? Two. And since it's a positive one-half times a negative four, it's a negative two. And then I bring down my y plus one. If I want to get y by itself, I need to move this positive one, so I'm going to subtract one from both sides. And if I do that, that makes zero. The y drops down, the equals drops down, the one-half x drops down. And how much is negative two minus one? Negative three. And there's my equation in slope-intercept form. Now, if it said put it in point-slope form, I would have stopped right here. So if it says point-slope form, you stop right here. But if you want to convert it to slope-intercept form, you distribute and then get y by itself. <coughs> okay, so point-slope form is what I use any time I'm given a point. And as long as I'm given the point and the slope, I'm ready to go. So let's look at this one. This one gives me two points. Well, since I'm given a point, I do need to start with point-slope form. Now, do I have everything I need? Do I have a point and a slope? No. All I have are points. So I need to find the slope before I'm ready for this formula. So in order to do that, that's when I find the slope between the two points using this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so here's an x-coordinate, here's a y-coordinate, here's an x-coordinate, here's a y-coordinate. Since this is my first point, I call it x1, y1. Since this is my second point, I call it x2, y2. 
So how would I write y2 minus y1? Negative 2 minus negative 4. And that minus the negative is going to make a plus. How do I write x2 minus x1? 2 minus negative 2. And that minus the negative is going to make a big plus. Now I just clean it up. How much is negative 2 plus 4? 2. How much is 2 plus 2? 4. And reduce, and I get 1 half. So that's the slope of my line. Now that I have my slope and I have points, I am ready for point slope form. So let me go ahead and write that equation down. y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Now I get to pick the point I want to use. So whichever point looks friendlier to you, let's just use it. So do you like the first point better or do you like the second point better? I guess it doesn't matter what you say because I ultimately have to make the decision. I'm going to use the second point. But if I would have used the first point, it wouldn't matter. But I'm just going to go with the second point. So I go y minus, this wants the y coordinate, so what's the y coordinate of the point I chose? Negative 2. Now remember I can clean that. The minus the negative just makes a big plus. Equals the slope. What did we find our slope to be? We found our slope to be 1 half, so I put 1 half where the m is. In parentheses, it's always x minus. This wants the x coordinate. So for the point I chose, what's the x coordinate? 2. I'm not subtracting a negative, so I don't need to change this into a plus. Okay, so if I wanted to leave the equation in point slope, I'd stop right here. If I wanted in slope intercept, I keep going. So first thing I'm going to do is distribute. So what is 1 half times x? It is 1 half x. What's 1 half times negative 2? Just think, what's half a 2? Half a 2 is 1, and a positive times a negative makes a negative, so it's a negative 1. I bring down the equals, and I bring down the y plus 2. Now, in order to get y by itself, I need to move this plus 2, so how do I do that? I subtract 2 from both sides, and things start dropping like flies. This makes 0, the y drops, the equals drops, the 1 half x drops, and how much is negative 1 minus 2? Negative 3. And there's my equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, so these last two boxes, we started off by be being given a point. So if you're ever given a point, you will start your equation in point-slope form. If you have the point and the slope, you're ready to begin. If you don't have a point and a slope, you're going to have to do something else first. So like in this one, I had points, but I didn't have slope. So the first thing I had to find was the slope. And then from there, I was ready to put it in point slope. Okay, I want to do two more. So let's go down to the very bottom and add in two more examples. So my first example, let's use the ordered pairs 2, 5 and 2, 8. I want to write the equation of the line through these two points. So, if I'm given points, I'm going to start with point-slope form. So, do I have the point? Do I have the slope? No, I only have the point. So, I need to first find my slope. So, y2 minus y1, 8 minus 5, over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 2. How much is 8 minus 5? 3. How much is 2 minus 2? 0. Uh-oh, what's that mean? When the zero is under the fraction bar, under, undefined, under, undefined. So I know the slope of this line is undefined. Rear, rear, rear. Stop and think for a second. If your slope is undefined or your slope is zero, we can stop what we're doing and we can just use some common sense here. What's the line look like if the slope is undefined? The line is a vertical line. I know that there's not two letters in vertical lines, so let's just come look at these ordered pairs. What do these two ordered pairs both have in common? They both have an x-coordinate of 2, so I know the equation to this is x equals 2.
and that's my answer. I didn't actually have to go through, pick a point, and put it in point-slope formula. I actually couldn't even possibly do that if I wanted to because the slope's undefined and there's no way I can work with that. So remember from up here, we saw that all vertical lines have an equation of x equals, so that's why it's x equals 2. If I were to plot those points and draw a vertical line through it, you would see that line only crosses the x-axis and everywhere on that line the x has a value of 2. Okay, let's do one more added in example. So, let's say we have the ordered pair 8, 3, and 2, 3. Once again, I'm starting off with points, so I'm going to think point-slope formula, but I don't have slope, so that's the first thing I need to find. So I'm going to go y2 minus y1, 3 minus 3, over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 8. How much is 3 minus 3? 0. How much is 2 minus 8? Negative 6. Now when the 0 is on top, what's the slope of this? The slope is 0. Rear, rear, rear. Stop and think. If the slope is 0, what's the line look like? The line is a horizontal line. So I know there's only one letter in this equation. Let's come look at the ordered pairs. They both have a y coordinate of 3, so I know the equation is y equals 3, and I'm done. And we saw up here that all horizontal lines do have an equation of y equals. So when you are working these problems and you're given points, you know you have to find slope first. If you ever find the slope to be undefined or 0, stop and think for a second and just come look at the ordered pairs and write down what they both have in common and BAM! You'll have your equation. Whereas up here, when you found the slope, you found the slope to be one half. So since the slope wasn't zero or undefined, I had to go through the process. I had to pick a point, whichever one I wanted to use. I put it in point slope, did the conversion process, got slope intercept form. So if your slope is something other than zero or undefined, you have to work the entire problem out. But if your slope is zero or undefined, you can take a shortcut, just look at the ordered pairs, see what they have in common, write your equations down. And that's all. Thank you so much.